I'm here to speak to you tonight about the right to speak at council meetings and freedom of the press. Number one, prior to last council meeting, I requested to be placed on the council agenda at Mr. Fox's urging, and I followed Rule 19 of Ludlam Rules, which states any person, group, or delegation wishing to be placed on the agenda to appear before council shall request in writing or by electronic means a letter to the clerk of council so it is received by the clerk no later than the end of the business day on the Thursday preceding the regularly scheduled council meeting or the fifth day prior to the scheduled meeting if it is scheduled for a day other than Tuesday. The mayor may suspend the rule in the event of unusual or emergency circumstances, <coughs> period. Rule 19 allows the mayor to suspend the rule, but there is no mention specifically under Rule 19 that gives the mayor discretion to deny anyone the right to be placed on the agenda. At the last council meeting, Mayor Bailey stated that she denied my request because there are typically too many people who want to speak at the meeting right before an election. Without a crystal ball, Mayor Bailey had no idea if anyone would come to the council to speak. And if you look back at the council meeting right before <clears throat> the 2019 election, there was one, one person who spoke. Interesting. Number two, Councilman Butler also asked to be placed on the agenda at the last meeting pursuant to Rule 11. Mayor Bailey also denied his request without explanation. Number three, at the last council meeting, 11 members of the community came prepared to speak to council during public forum. Many about annexation, the pressing topic of the night. The time and effort taken by citizens to speak to council is immeasurable. Prior to public forum, the mayor announced that council members would not be allowed to address the speakers until all had spoken, and then they were only allowed five minutes to speak. There is no council rule that allows the mayor to restrict council in their ability to interact with citizens who come before them. How the heck could a member of council be able to adequately address the issues of 10 speakers in five minutes? In the end, only Mr. Butler chose to respond to the citizens before council about annexation. Number four, at the February 9th, 2021 meeting, Mr. Butler asked and was placed pursuant to Rule 11 on the agenda to talk about the financial implications of the proposed parking garage. At this point, a cost estimate was before council. During the meeting, Mayor Bailey immediately went to Mr. Blair before he had even asked to speak, knowing he would make a motion to deny Mr. Butler's request. All the other members voted to deny Mr. Butler the right to speak. Instead of allowing Mr. Butler to speak, Council spent 15 minutes talking about why he shouldn't speak. 15 minutes was wasted discussing process rather than allowing Mr. Butler to speak substance. We will never know for sure what Mr. Butler was going to say, and that's a shame. If some members don't feel prepared to speak on a topic, don't talk. But don't deny an, um, another member the right to do so. Number five. Rule 7 states that the mayor, as presiding officer, shall avoid the appearance of partiality on any issue by conducting the meeting in a fair and impartial manner. At the October 12, 2021 City Council meeting, Mr. Butler wanted to ask the city manager questions about the proposed annexation. During the exchange with Mr. Kennedy, Mayor Bailey interrupted Councilman Butler and said he didn't need to ask Mr. Kennedy any questions because Mr. Kennedy didn't know the cost of providing services for Miami Township. First of all, if Council doesn't know the cost, they should. And it was completely in inappropriate for, or it was completely appropriate for Mr. Butler to ask questions. And secondly, it was totally improper for Ms. Bailey to interrupt Mr. Butler. The city manager reports to all of the city council equally, and he has an obligation to answer questions from all members of council. I've never seen this, I've never seen Mayor Bailey do this to another member of council. Number six, at, October, at the August 24, 2021 city council meeting, citizen Dave Stanton wanted to address council the, during public forum about the Boston Hill development. Before the meeting, Mayor Bailey told Mr. Stanton in the hall that he wouldn't be allowed to speak again on Blossom Hill. During the meeting, the city solicitor showed Ms. Bailey in the rule book that she was wrong. 
When Mr. Stanton appeared during public forum and stated that the mayor had told him he could not speak, Mayor Bailey interrupted him and said, quote, no, I believe I was mistaken on that, Mr. Stanton. You're welcome to speak if you would like. The mayor had to admit she was wrong again and did so in a tone that was so condescending and dismissive of Mr. Stanton. She never issued a public apology to Mr. Stanton. Number seven, at the February 11, 2020 council meeting, resident Karen Hawk spoke in open form about her concern about the proposed parking garage. Ms. Hawks asked, quote, is this a done plan now? Mayor Bailey responded by saying, quote, there is no done plan, but there will be a parking facility on that location. Ms. Hawks asked if the citizens would get to vote on the project. And Ms. Bailey responded by saying, well, quote, you, you voted on your elected officials, and those are the decisions that we've been elected to make. While Ms. Hawks was allowed to speak, Mayor Bailey made it clear that her voice carried no weight with her, and a garage will be built because she's in charge. It was a stunning exchange. Number eight, at the May 27, 2021 meeting, <coughs> council voted to amend the rules of city council. Rule 20 was changed to allow council to limit the total number of citizens that can speak to a total of 20 minutes. So if each person can speak for five minutes during public forum, that will allow for four speakers. Even if hundreds of people signed up to speak during public forum, it's the job of council to hear the voices of the citizens. If that requires members to sit through 100 speakers, then so be it. Number nine. Additionally, council also voted to limit the ability of a member of the public to appear before council to only once instead of twice per calendar year on the same topic. Only Mr. Butler voted against these changes. How can the mayor and other members of council vote to restrict speech when during election time they all say they want to listen to the voices of the citizens? This needs to be corrected. If everything the mayor is trying to accomplish is so wonderful, why is she trying to limit the access of the press? Why would she be trying to muzzle the citizens of Loveland? Why is she preventing members of council from speaking? It makes absolutely no sense, unless she's trying to hide something. It's obvious that the mayor's fallback position is to deny, restrict, quiet, stifle, and constrain the voices of the citizens, council members she disagrees with, and the press. These are not isolated events, but an ongoing pattern of behavior by the mayor. By the mayor. A leader that actually cared about the citizens she represents would always err on the side of free speech, but Mayor, has, Mayor Bailey has chosen to do the opposite. Thankfully, the city solicitor has intervened on numerous occasions to stop her. In 2017, Mayor, Fitz, Mayor Mark Fitzgerald faced a recall before resigning. It was a dark time for Loveland, and Mayor Bailey is doing much of what Mark Fitzgerald was accused of doing, allowing active participation of the citizenry and of duly elected members of council should be the goal of any functioning democracy and should be insisted upon by all of those who are in positions of power. The actions of Mayor Bailey should serve as a wake-up call for the citizens of Loveland, the members of council, and to those who spoke so loudly against Mark Fitzgerald four years ago. I'll be honest, this, is, this really saddens me because I was a supporter. I was a supporter of Mayor Bailey when she first ran for council. I had high hopes for her to be an effective leader, but here we are. We can and must do better.